Um, I'm guessing No Joke hosted me because he wants me to actually play a game. So rather than watch that, um, that glorious mess play itself out, we're going to play another game. Uh, let's see, can we get a 4-2 game? 4-2, fine, we'll do it rated. Oh, I forgot I'd lost rating points in the previous tournament, so I don't have so much to worry about losing right now. That's kind of convenient. In a strange way. Alright. Oh, we got no joke. Oh man, this is serious. Yep, yep, GL and whatnot. GL and whatnot. Alright, here we are with the Trompowski. The most serious opening of them all. Here we go. C5. Pretty sure you're supposed to play C5. And like Queen A5. Um, pretty sure that's how it goes. And then I guess I have to move the knight back. Man, this is one serious opening. Oh, I forgot, this is 4-2, so there's actually time to think about stuff. Not that we're actually going to use it. You never know. We might. Um, okay, double my pawns. End games are fun. Did I mention how fun end games are? I don't think I did. Yeah, apparently I got sniped here. Just it's not hard to do when I'm seeking a four two game and nobody on Lee Chess plays four two. <laughs> Alright. So sure. I mean I see kinda sorta what he's up to. I'm not sure I see all the details of it, but um let's see, where do I develop? What's this? I'm actually pausing and thinking and focusing for a second. What's wrong? <laughs> uh, what a mess. Here we go! I found an idea. I, I found this like 30 seconds ago, but I couldn't justify it. And now I found a way to kind of sort of justify it. Um, do I take the pawn? No. We can't take the pawn. That would be silly. Alright. I was, I was hoping you'd take that and I'd take the knight. That's like what I saw. I didn't see this knight move. I mean, I kind of knew it was there, but I didn't think it would actually matter. And this is where hope chess happens, so... We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'm lucky, maybe I'm not. Can't be lucky every game. Alrighty. I'm attacking a thing. Just develop this somewhere. So what? I've got the bishop here, but I'm down a pawn. It's probably okay. I'll put it this way, of all the games I've played tonight, this is not the worst position I've seen. So, in that small sense, this is a victory. Alright, and sure, let's castle. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, 
All right. We've dominated this night. Man, I feel as if, like, I'm playing the Black Side of Two Knights defense, which is not something I do often. But just Black gets all this annoying pressure that's really hard to deal with. Um, let's see, I was going to go back to C5. I still might do it. I haven't decided. Hmm. Uh, we'll go back to h6. Okay. Well, it's kind of a shame that I didn't go back to c5. c5 would have been fun. Okay, we'll move the knight somewhere. We got a knight move. And let's advance this pawn. My opponent's actually paying attention. It's kind of interesting. It's forcing me to play a little bit better, um, or more accurately than I normally play. All right. Uh, there's no need to kick the knight. So fine, we'll move the bishop back to this diagonal. And by this, I haven't yet decided which one, but I've got a couple options. Okay. Oh, hey, look. You remember that thing I was saying about attention span, right? We're going to pretend that I did that on purpose, but, um, yeah. What a bummer. I mean, the position was going downhill in any event, but, uh, actually I get some counterplay, so this isn't so bad. I just got distracted. This isn't terrible, though. This could be a lot worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I needed to play bishop g7 instead of what I did play. Um, okay. Oh, hey, look, I'm hanging another pawn. Or am I? Yeah, I am. Alright, well... We got a kind of inferior endgame thing going. Oh, I was going to take on d6 next. What am I smoking? Taking on d6 kind of gives away two rooks, not just one. So I should kind of avoid doing that. Alright, so here we're only down three pawns uh, with like no compensation. But maybe I can go down four somehow. Uh, okay. Oh, it's cute. Oh, my rook's attacked. Wow. Wow, that's good. All right, we'll go into this because there's nothing better. Um. No, you should have done rook takes, man. Uh, okay, well... Oh, damn it. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, what do I do now? I've just made the game exciting again. Um, yeah. We're having some fun playing Blitz, aren't we? Alright, so move the king back out of harm's way. And hit a rook. Do do do. Alright. 
Oh, let's check. Well, that sucks. Uh... Okay. Please tell me this isn't me. <laughs> Please tell me I'm not getting made it here. Oh. Oh no, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Uh, it's going a little bit loopy here, but that's the joke. Yeah, there we go. Um, sure, so if I take... No, I can't take. Let's go back. Oh yeah, look at that. The rest is technique, man. The rest is technique. Oh, what a game. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess you wished me good luck that game. I guess we both had some good luck. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, no joke. Let's take a look, because I don't know what happened either. Okay? Uh, oh, so you guys who are watching along... Why did I do the sack? Well, this is actually kind of clever. So the point is that if he takes, I've got this check. Or actually, I'm sorry, if he takes, this is actually mate in one. I thought the bishop was somehow covering d1, which it's not. Um, but if a bishop were covering d1, I would need to do the other check and then the mate. But, um, yeah, taking the bishop can't be done there. All right, so the graph. Oh, so white's winning most of the game. I got back into the game here and promptly blundered it away after after no joke so kindly donated this knight on b6. I gave it back with rook takes d6, just giving back the bishop for no reason. Better was playing just about anything else. Um, okay, so, but yeah, wait. Stockfish. No. Oh, was I still worse here? I thought my bishop takes a3 thing, like, leveled the playing field. And apparently now I'm only down by two pawns. But, like, how does white win this? How? How is there anything here for white? No, that's not forced. Are you, what are you thinking, Stockfish? Why would you think I would take that? No, I would not take b2. Not unless it really gave me a strong drawing chance, which it totally doesn't. Um, I guess Stockfish is saying that this pawn is um, toast. And so to prolong the agony the longest, I should trade off pieces. Oh, could I have blocked with rook to the seventh? So, yeah, to your question, um, we're talking about this position. And, yeah, I thought, yeah, of course, I could just move my rook to f7 here. That's the kind of state that I'm in at the moment, where I just don't have the attention span to actually look at the real legal moves that are on the board. I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll block with, like, rook f7 or rook d7. Both of them block this. Something like that was going through my head. Um, that's kind of known as hope chess. Um, it just doesn't work out here. But, uh, yeah, when, when time pressure hit, uh, which was really the only shot I had going for me toward the end of this, like, I doubled my rooks on the 7th, right? And no joke doubled his rooks on the B file. And that was an excellent defense, and he just kind of panicked at the last moment. Um, like, I don't know, he's shuffling his rooks up and down the file. Really, he just um, needs to get his king out, actually, to somewhere like here, and just race these pawns down the board. Easier said than done, but it makes it really difficult for my rooks to meaningfully attack anything. 
And, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to find plans like that in time pressure. Yeah, you have like three seconds. There's no way you're going to find this idea unless you've played a million endgames like I have. Like, I've played many endgames and that's how I know these ideas. Like, double the rooks on the seventh here is a counterplay measure. Because I'm not sure how I managed to get both rooks there in the first place. I thought there was a way to stop that. Like, okay, so... Here's the position, right? And I'm down three pawns. And I just play rook d2, because my only shot to draw this is just put my rooks over here and hope that things work out okay. Oh, but... Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, he can't stop... He, like, usually white can, like, play rook e1 and rook e7 and rook... 72 or stuff and usually he's able to stop this rook invasion thing um here he can't do that so actually this is kind of decent ish counterplay um see so yeah, this actually makes white's life quite difficult and i step my king back because i don't want to get mated the same way that i'm threatening things over here but yeah, I think white just plays like rook e7, rook b7, and I don't know, maybe bishop b3 at some point, but this looks absolutely terrifying for black. Well, I mean, the one thing I had going for me that game is that I was playing moves like an idiot, moving really quickly. Um, so that's how the time situation occurred. And using time is actually a good thing when you have an increment. Because you're supposed to have enough time that theoretically, if you're down to a few seconds, you can still kind of sort of play the end game just on the increment. It's difficult, but... <laughs> uh, so close to hanging mate in one, eh? Let's see, where would that potential mate in one be anyway? Oh! Okay, so something like, yeah, okay, I can see that, I can see that. But anyhow, I gained the rook, and I didn't expect no joke to find rook a8 here. Because, um, yeah, if he doesn't find rook a8, I just push a3 and then do, like, a takes b2, or rook takes b2 or something. Um, although, I guess, technically, I'm ahead here on material. So, okay, what? Stockfish tells us that the best move here was a4. Oh my god. Stockfish, you're drunk. Go home. No, but you're right, but, oh my goodness. Yeah, I was never going to find a4 here. I did find it next move when it was less effective. I should get some credit for that. But, you know, Black's plan is just to, like, take on b2. Apparently I'm better here. Um, so when did that conversion happen? Like, see, so yeah, a bishop to e6. Um, doing something. I don't know. You have, like, no time left. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, if you're up a pawn, uh, but down a minute, it's kind of hard to convert those. Unless you have some positional advantage to go with it. And that's why, like, the two knights defense is so effective. Okay, so back to my remaining question here. Seriously, what is this opening? It's a Trompowski. I played knight d6 like I've played so many times before. And no joke, very accurately punished my knight d6. And I've definitely learned something from it. Don't play knight d6 in this position. Play knight f6.